If you are into online gaming, you're probably familiar with the concept of bots, fake enemies controlled by artificial intelligence that can take the place of your opponents instead of real people. So you might be wondering, are there any bots for Hole.io? The answer is no, because you don't need any. It's as simple as that. This black hole simulator was created with multiplayer in mind from the very beginning. The rounds are short, so it's okay if you don't make it to the top right away. Practice by competing against actual people. Lose some games, learn from your mistake, and gain that priceless experience to become the best. Okay, play now. And I'll hit play. Loading graphics, searching server, preparing match. Cool, cool. And we're in a match here, and I click and move around, yep. Playing the game, there's other players here, and I'll just turn off my Wi-Fi here. And the game works perfectly, I don't get disconnected even though I'm not connected to the internet anymore. Let's start at the beginning. The TLD, or Top Level Domain .io, came into being in 1997. It's supposed to be for entities in the British Island Ocean Territories, but in reality it's used mostly by tech companies because IO stands for Input Output in the Computer Science World. Fast forward to 2015, a game developer named Mateus Valadaris posts on 4chan a link to a game he made. The game was kind of like the first stage of Spore and didn't have a name yet. People were just connecting to his IP address. Someone suggested calling it agar, which is a gelatinous substance used in biological cultures and as a food thickener. Then someone suggested the URL agar.io, thus agar.io was born. It was fun, easy to learn, and didn't require sign up to play, you just click and immediately start. It became insanely popular, tons of famous YouTubers played it, and Mateus made absurd amounts of money off of it. And of course when someone's successful, lots of people are going to imitate them, and thus the IO genre was born. Games that were fun, easy to learn, one click to play, and had a .io URL. But developers for this new genre ran into a problem. Let's say you're a relatively unknown developer and you release a multiplayer IO game. You put it on some site and wait, a player stumbles across it, joins, plays for a few seconds, sees there's no other players, and leaves. Your game is dead. So the solution, populate the game with bots. Then when real players join, they'll see what they think are other players and stay and play the game. Then hopefully they have fun and go and tell their friends about it. Gradually the game builds an audience of real players and eventually you no longer need bots in your game. But at some point, some developer got an idea. If I'm making a game with a bunch of bots that act just like players and real players can't tell the difference, why don't I just make a single player game that looks like a multiplayer game and say it's multiplayer? This has several advantages. The devs don't need to pay for servers, they don't have to write complicated netcode, and the best part is there's no lag on mobile. It's difficult to make real-time multiplayer games for mobile internet because it's unreliable and can lag or disconnect at any time. The weather changes, you go under a bridge, whatever, you get a lag. Now, while having a fake multiplayer game is dishonest, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. After all, in this situation, a player that plays what they think is a real multiplayer game is having an objectively better experience than the player who's playing an actual multiplayer mobile game. It is bad for developers, though. Let's go on the Play Store and search IO multiplayer games. A lot of these aren't multiplayer, especially not the promoted ones. You can see a lot of them are actually tagged as single player and offline, but plenty of people don't notice those tags. Here's someone complaining about how they thought this game was multiplayer, but then their internet went out and they found out it was single player. There are rules against false advertising on the app stores. They require correct categorization of the games on them, and it's kind of funny to see how these publishers try to make their games sound multiplayer without actually saying they are. Speaking of publishers, you'll see Voodoo Games come up a lot. They're big players in this fake multiplayer cash grab genre, and they churn out a lot of games. They're famous for ripping off indie games and making fake multiplayer versions of them. One example, they ripped off Donut County to make Hole.io, then said it wasn't a clone but rather a game in the same subgenre. A subgenre which currently only has two games in it, Donut County and Hole.io. It's okay, Voodoo, I believe you. Also, can you give me a job? I don't have networking experience, but I notice that's not a requirement for any of your developer positions. They also buy a lot of installs in their games to boost them on the app stores, which is not allowed by the Play Store or App Store, but they get away with it. And it pays off. Goldman Sachs backed them with a $200 million investment a while ago. Let's take a look at another publisher, Nightsteed. I noticed something interesting with one of their games, Evil Wars. On the mobile version, if I turn on airplane mode, it works fine. 
But if I play in the browser on my computer and turn off my Wi-Fi, I get disconnected. I was wondering maybe the mobile version was single player while the browser version was actually multiplayer. Well, there's some tests I can do. First, the devs left the list of bot names public, so I can just go and check every player's name against it. Either nobody plays this, which is why I'm getting matched with bots, or there's some kind of network check on the desktop version. I tried unplugging my router from the internet, that way my computer would still show up as being connected to Wi-Fi and the game didn't disconnect. <laughs> they, they couldn't even be bothered to just ping Google to see if they were actually connected. I'm guessing they have this basic check in place though because an internet outage on desktop is a lot more noticeable than on mobile, where if the Wi-Fi goes out you'll assume you're still connected on 4G. Another example of how lazy Nightsteed is on their game Brutal Mania, the list of bot names was also left public and it's the same list. I'm pretty sure they use the same one for every one of their games. Anyways, to conclude this video, happy to announce that I am now an IO multiplayer game developer. JP Morgan reached out to me and offered me $50 million to rip off indie games and make them look multiplayer and I was like, why be creative and original when I could just be rich? I'm excited to announce my new multiplayer game, They Asked Thou. It is 100% real multiplayer because I believe it's important to play against real people so you can learn from your mistakes and also it has 300 million downloads so you know it's good. Link in the description. Also, I'd like to thank PostFoo for reaching out to me about this topic and providing most of the information in this video. I've linked his Twitter in the description.